Okay, hello everybody. Hello, hello, and welcome. What's everyone doing, and how is everyone going? Wait, what, who, how? <laughs> what, how, who, ha, ha? Happy Friday, everybody. What is up? Uh, I am DSP. Welcome to my gameplay stream for the day. Only one today. Uh. And we'll start off with a nice belch, like usual. Let's get the ball rolling the way that we know how with giant belches. Okay. <laughs> so. Today's gameplay stream, ladies and gentlemen. Call of Duty World War II. The Private Beta. Yes. A lot of, uh, <clears throat> you know interest in this to see how this game is after years of Call of Duty basically going futuristic, right? You gotta think about it. It was, um... I'm trying to think. What was the one that really pushed them into the futuristic stuff? Was it Advanced Warfare? Because there was... Well, I would say it was actually the Black Ops games, to some extent, started going more futuristic. And then you had Advanced Warfare, and then you had Infinite Warfare. With their double-jumping, wall-running... Transform into a robot dog bullshit. Um, that really didn't belong in the Call of Duty franchise, in my opinion. You know, me, I played all the original Call of Duty games. Call of Duty 1, 2, 3. They were all old school combat. Uh, I played those on the PC, by the way. That was back when I actually had a, you know, a gaming PC. And I actually would play, uh, you know, first person shooters on a PC. Um... And I really liked those games. And then when... It, 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 the more the futuristic the games got, I think the worse they got. The only exception I'd say is Modern Warfare 1 and 2 were pretty good. But then it just got out of control after that, okay? So. Oh, that's right. PC Game Hunter says that Black Ops was in the 1960s at first, so it was actually Ghosts that went futuristic first. That's right. And Ghosts was the worst one. <laughs> Ghost was absolutely the worst Call of Duty game possible. Um, <clears throat> so, here we are uh, with Call of Duty World War II going back to its roots, right? I mean, the original Call of Duty games were back set in World War II. Um, or, you know, older, older style battles as well. There was, I believe, World at War. I forget which war that was. But, um... You know, a lot of people like these throwback-style games. This is where these first-person shooters kind of got their origination. Um, and we just saw with Battlefield last year that they went back to their roots with Battlefield 1, and it was a big hit. Everyone liked it. So now we're doing the same thing with Call of Duty. Um, I've heard some good things about this beta. It, re it actually released early. It released yesterday, uh, a day before it was supposed to actually go live. It went live. Now, I already had a whole day of, uh, you know, schedule scheduled out yesterday, and I wasn't going to drop everything to play this, because I had already scheduled out a couple sessions of it over this weekend, so. <clears throat> so, yes, folks, um, we're going to check it out, see what it is. Now, I've heard it has a lot of content, too. I actually heard there's five different classes you could play as. Um, I've also heard that there's several game modes, like four, four game modes uh, in this. And, you know, with these multiplayer-centric games, you really got to play a several matches of each game mode to really get a handle on each one. Um, so, there may actually be, you know, enough content to hold off a couple streams here to actually, you know, fill up a couple gameplay streams over the weekend. I guess we'll see. All right. Fair enough. All right. We'll see how it goes. So, this is going to be my gameplay stream for today. Um, no gameplay stream later tonight. Later tonight, I'm heading out to do my... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, my errands, like grocery shopping and stuff like that. Tomorrow, I'm also going to be playing the Call of Duty World War II beta. Um, so I'll have a couple sessions, you know, here to get a feeling of how the game plays. Um, and tomorrow night, I'm actually going to be on the Tiger Powered Podcast. That's right, the same podcast I was on earlier this month where the audio went all wrong and everything screwed up. This time, we're doing a completely different method. And, uh... Hopefully, I sound a lot better. Let's put it that way. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be doing... I'm going to be recording that. And then, I'm going to be taking it tomorrow night to film a bunch of reviews. I am fully aware that I have not had a chance to really do any reviews uh, recently. I, I... Just this week, I completed Agents of Mayhem and Sonic Mania and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. 
And I know there's people who want to hear my thoughts on these games, and I just have not had a chance to record any reviews, honestly. Um, so, I'm going to be doing uh, these reviews tomorrow night, hopefully. And I'm not going to re release them all at once, but... You know, what I could maybe do is on KO Gaming, you try to ease people back into reviews, maybe over the course of the next week, review uh, release one every couple days. <clears throat> or something like that, alright? <clears throat> um, and then Sunday, Ultra Street Fighter 2 returns, my weekly Ultra Street Fighter 2 stream. And Sunday night, I'll be doing the weekend preview, and, you know, personal stuff. I got some bills to pay and a bunch of other shit to do around the house. So, for three straight days, it's only going to be one gameplay stream. And I do apologize for those who love the double streams. Uh, but don't worry, because next week, then we're back to business as usual. <clears throat> there will be double streams pretty much all week. <sighs> the one thing that's up for debate next week is I'm, I'm wondering if I should play Yakuza. And let me explain why. Um, so, next week, <clears throat> the new releases are Yakuza Kiwami, which is the remake of the original Yakuza game that I never played. Also, Mario plus Rabbids on the Switch. And then later in the week, there's Life is Strange, the prequel, you know, game, episode one. Now, what I'm wondering is, should I start Yakuza? And here's why I'm thinking. Because there's a lot going on during the week, but it's not enough to really fill up the whole week. I think that I'll be finishing up Danganronpa 2 uh, shortly. Like, it's not going to be... Danganronpa 2 isn't going to take a long time to beat. It's only, like, one or two more sessions. And then once that's done... Um... <clears throat> you know, really... Am I going to be playing Mario plus Rabbids, you know, double streams all week? Of course not. Uh, that, that would be way too much. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I was thinking maybe balance that with Yakuza. And that would be a good balance, a shift between two different kinds of games. The problem is, I know for a fact there's no way I'm going to be able to beat Yakuza... Anytime soon. You know how long these Yakuza games are. They're typically anywhere from, you know, 30 to 40 hours of gameplay. So, I know there's no way that if I play it, I'm going to beat it right away. Uh, but I also don't want to have just empty streams where I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I want to be playing a new release that people are going to want to watch. So, I don't know what to do. I'm a little bit uh, kind of indecisive regarding next week of what I in particular I should be playing or not. Like, I'll give you an example. <laughs> I know the week after that, we got Knack 2 and Destiny 2. Um, and I know I'm going to end up being busy, you know, that week probably with those games for a, 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 a big tear. But then the week after that, there's like nothing coming out at all. So it's kind of like weird. It's, it's like there's these time periods when there's a week where there's a ton coming out and then there's nothing coming out. So that's what I mean. Like, Nakuzo could make sense to be a game that I'm playing in these times when there's nothing going on. But then I know what's going to happen is I'm going to get caught up with... All their new releases, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have time periods when I'm not able to play Yakuza consistently. <clears throat> you know, would my viewer base be patient enough to wait in between the new releases for Yakuza to come back periodically? I don't know. So, I'm on the fence about starting Yakuza, but if I don't start Yakuza this coming week, then I honestly don't know what else I'm going to do to balance my streams out. So, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty indecisive like I said I'm undecided on what I want to do I gotta think about it okay <laughs> alrighty I'm trying to think if there's anything else to mention on the pre-stream like I said earlier this was not going to be a long pre-stream today there's not a lot to talk about um not really right not a lot not not, there's a lot going on in regards to new games and everything, but there's not a lot going on in regards to me telling you news about stuff, because there's really not going much going on besides me just covering all the new stuff, right? <clears throat> Alright, I guess I'll do a few shout-outs here for those who've been cheering. Um, let's see what we got. Hold on. My laptop would move. I could read the cheers. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Hollow11, who did a 200 bit cheer and says, I spawn, I die. Oh boy. Yep. I wonder if it'll be that bad. Probably not, because this is going to be World War II, so you're not going to have crazy amounts of shit going on. Maybe, they, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe it will be. I don't know. Thack My Pushy. What a creative name. Did a 25 bit cheer and said, Time for a Battlefield. Oh, I mean, of Call of Duty 1, World War II, whatever. <laughs> 
Shout out to Alexander Rossi, who did a 50-bit cheer, and he said, good luck to the people of Texas tonight. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Texas, a great state in America. It's a huge one, one of the biggest states we have. Um, actually, is it the biggest state? I think it is. Eh, California might edge it out. I'm not sure. <sighs> but the state of Texas is about to get slammed with a crazy powerful hurricane. I think it's Hurricane Harvey or something like that. Um, the strongest recorded hurricane that we've had in the United States for the past uh, uh, 12 years. And <clears throat> apparently, the problem here that's going to happen with this hurricane is that it's not a normal hurricane. You know, a normal hurricane would just pass over and it's gone, so you get a day of devastation or whatever, and then you're good. Apparently, this is a unique situation where there's two high-pressure uh, systems in the same area, and what they're doing is they're sandwiching this hurricane between them. So this hurricane is going to hit landfall in Texas and get stuck there for four days. Four freaking days, dude. <clears throat> How crazy is that? Um, that is really bad, because what they're saying is that Texas basically isn't equipped for this, and they're expecting, they're expecting rainfall to be so bad, it's going to be measured in feet, feet, not in inches, in feet, that's pretty insane, um, Seriously, like, I feel really bad. If it floods that bad, you're going to see houses destroyed. You're going to see, you know, entire areas are going to be flooded for, like, weeks. That's what they're saying is that they're actually predicting power is going to be out in parts of Texas for weeks. So, it's going to be a bad time for a lot of people, okay? <clears throat> yeah, Kekin just said it. Kekin lives in Texas, and he says, Central Texas has pretty much no flood prevention, so therefore, cities are going to vanish, like, they're just going to go, whoop, sucked under. That's pretty crazy. Damn. So, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, what I, what obviously, what everyone is hoping here is that this doesn't become another Hurricane Katrina situation like what happened in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and other you know, surrounding areas where basically everything got absolutely destroyed. And, you know, that was, like, worst-case scenario. So people are hoping it doesn't become that. Um, but anyway, yeah. If you live in Texas, folks, I feel really bad for you. And uh, hopefully you've taken precautions because that hurricane is supposed to hit tonight. Okay? Hopefully you haven't been, like, living under a rock and you just heard about this now. Because <laughs> chances are you probably won't be able to get any supplies or anything for this impending doom storm. I'm sure this is going to be all we hear about in the news for the next few days is this storm hitting. <clears throat> Alright. Shout out to the great Rad Rad who did a 10-bit cheer and he asked a question about fans not being fans or something. Um, What the hell is it? He says, is there a time when some of your friends turned against you and not being fans anymore for wrong reason? I don't know. I'm not my f I'm not my fans. I don't know why if and why fans. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there's some of these people who are so disgruntled against me feel that I've done some kind of a personal slight against them sometime over the years, despite the fact that I probably have never had any direct interaction with them. Some people are like that. I hate to say that, but some people get like really obsessive over stuff and they feel like they have like this crazy personal relationship with me. Um, even though I probably never even had an interaction with them. And, you know, maybe there's something that happened over the years. I made a decision not to play this game. Or I played this game and I, I made a joke about a game developer that laid love or something. And now they've got this crazy-ass, you know, obsession with, oh, Phil's an evil person or a bad... I don't know. Listen, I don't deal with that shit. I'm here to play games and have fun. That's the bottom line, folks. All right. Great Rad Rad did another 30-bit cheer. He says, are you considering doing Undertale Genocide? Um, It's always been a consideration. Right now, patrons are nominating and shortly will be voting on a game for a patron's choice playthrough. Um, it never wins. It's been in a bunch of polls and it never wins. So what that means is that there's basically not enough demand for it. There may be a small group of people who are vocal about it, but it's not anything that... The majority of viewers want. So there you go. 
<clears throat> Never forget the ten bitch here. He says, ready to see some of that legendary aim bra aim fill. Hopefully this is good. Poplicolo did a 15 bit cheer and he says, Did you hear that a former Valve writer uploaded a plot summary of Half Life 2 Episode 3? Uh, obviously, no, I did not hear that. The question is, is that what they were going like? Is it a plot summary of the, uh, you know, this Episode 3 expansion that was going to be out years ago and they just decided against it? <clears throat> Or are they working on that right now? Because it's a little late to be releasing a DLC for a game that's over 10 years old. I'm just saying. <laughs> then we got a troll cheer that I'm not going to read. And then Slow Brosif did a 50-bit cheer and said, Have you thought of any more about getting a pet? I have, but at this point, even though I would like to have a pet, um, honestly, financially, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think that I'm going to do it because financially any money basically that i raise has to go towards my bills as i've been telling you guys for the past week i'm not exaggerating here everyone i'm in a pretty bad position right now for the month of september all right the the truth of the matter is that july screwed me over youtube ad revenue plummeted for no effing reason and it was really low and uh i also have my taxes due in september so i'm like doubly screwed and, you know, everything was going good. These past few months, everything's been going smoothly. Um, financially for me, it's been, you know, I've been able to pay my bills and everything. And now all of a sudden in September, I'm pretty boned. Um, which is why I've been asking you guys for your support, whether if you could pledge to my Patreon in the next six days, or if you could tip me here on the streams, that would really help. Because if I get through September, October is going to be much better because ad revenue has gone up a little bit this month on YouTube. And... Um, you know, here on Twitch this month has been really good. Excuse me. In fact, here on Twitch, it might be the best month I've ever had. All right. So, I really do need your help, guys. I'm not, like, exaggerating or making shit up. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do come September uh, when it comes to paying my bills. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to have enough funds to cover them all. I'm doing real with you. Um... So, I, really, pets are not a concern when I can't, pay, you know, pay the fucking regular bills. I'm not exactly, exactly considering heading out to buy pets and, uh, you know, spend money on that when I don't have the money, okay? <clears throat> Marky Mark did a 10-bit cheer and says, rest in, peace, rest in peace, Rich Piana. Well, I don't know who that is, but hopefully uh, the shout-out... Uh, you know, is appropriate. I don't know. You know. I don't know the frame of reference, so. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Shout out to Danny Hikari, who did a 10-bit cheer and says, do you like Yu Yu Hakusho or Dragon Ball Z better? I don't know. I mean, they have very big similarities between them. <clears throat> you know, Yu Yu Hakusho twice has a world tournament. Which is funny because it's kind of the same as uh, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball had several world tournaments during the course of the game, or of the game, the course of the series, and there are a lot of parallels and similarities between the series. So, I mean, obviously, Dragon Ball Z was the much longer series. Yu Yu Hakusho was only four seasons. Um, Dragon Ball Z was what seven, seven or eight, I think. They're both good. I don't think you need to choose. I really don't. I think that they're both good. Oh my god. King of Hypocrisy. Dude. Alright. Can I please say something? If you guys are going to cheer, could you not ask me a mundane question about if I'm going to play generic game X or other game Y? Here's another one. King of Hypocrisy did a 10-bit cheer. Are you going to play Max Payne 1 and 2 during downtime? Dude. First of all, I've already answered this question. <laughs> I, I swear someone just asked me this this past week. So I don't know if you're trolling or not, because you typically do troll me, King of Hypocrisy. Um, I've already answered this. Stop answer, Stop asking me generic questions about mundane game X or Y if I'm going to play it during downtime. The answer is, I will play it if people want it, but there's no demand for it, so I'm not playing it. Jesus. It's the same question over and over. I get it like every day. Are you going to play this game? 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 
Oh. All right. RightsMac18 has resubscribed to the channel for the fifth month in a row. Thank you, RightsMac. He says, really excited for the stream. I want to see how it holds up and compares to Battlefield 1. Yes, I do too. All right? I do too. I want to see if it holds up, if it's good. Because keep in mind, Call of Duty and Battlefield are two completely different styles of games. Even though they're both first-person shooters, uh, they play typically way differently. So, this will be interesting. Alexander Rossi did a $10 joke cheer, and he says, Are you going to play generic game X or other game Y? <laughs> and then a troll cheer, so I'm ignoring that. Um, the Wanderer1800 just subscribed. Thank you, Wanderer, for subscribing to the channel. Appreciate that. <clears throat> yes, yeah, Stuart360 in the stream chat says, well, at least you can't complain about wall running and double jumps and jetpacks and stuff like that. Yes. I cannot. It'll be more straightforward, more uh, straight up first person shooter, so. <clears throat> Thack my pushy did a 10 bit cheer and says it'll hold up in regards to frame rate. I hope so. Call of Duty has always run at a pretty smooth 60 frames per second on consoles, so I'm hoping that they stayed to that uh, standard. Because that's really one of the things that, for me, has always been a selling point of the Call of Duty series. You know you're going to get silky smooth gameplay when you play Call of Duty, right? <clears throat> Alright. I guess that's it, folks. I guess it's time to start. I will say a couple things quick, though. As I already mentioned, folks... I really need your help in September. I'm not joking <laughs> at all here. Um, if you could pledge to my Patreon, I'd appreciate it. We are we actually got a few new pledges in, and now we're under $200 under the goal. I think it's like $190 under the goal or something like that. Um, So, check it out. Patreon.com forward slash DarksideFill. If we hit the funding goal, I'll be doing a Halloween Horror Marathon and dressing up for the marathon. If you pledge five bucks or more, you'll be able to nominate and vote not only on the games for the marathon, but also you'll be able to pick what kind of costume I'll be wearing. Uh, but we have to hit the goal, and there's only six days left. So we are getting down to the wire here, folks. Um, seriously, we are, like, in desperate risk of not hitting the goal and not doing a Halloween event this year. Uh, I did this as a goal two years prior, and each year we hit the goal. So I know it's something people want. Um, please consider pledging. I, I, of all times, this is the month I need your support um, because of what's going to happen in September here, coming up, all right? And then number two, obviously, if you're watching this stream, folks, uh, and you like what you see, and, uh, you know, you want to jump in and contribute, you could either cheer with bitch, you could sub to the channel, or you could hit me, all right? Any of those things are available to you. If you do any of those things, I will give you a verbal shout-out during the stream, and... If you cheer 50 bits or more, if you um, uh, click the share button after subscribing to the channel, or if you uh, tip me $2 or more, you'll actually get an on-screen notification. All right? So you get double recognition, basically. You get visual in the actual stream itself, and then also I'll give you a verbal shout-out. All right? Um, if you have the freedom and option to choose... A method to contribute today I would ask that you tip me reason being is because I get that right away and again with what's impending going to happen here in September it would significantly help me if uh, you, know, you tip me because I get that money right now and I could use that to pay my bills in September all right um, so <clears throat> if you're interested in, gee how do I tip if you look below the stream there's a section there you know along, amongst all my rules and links and everything that says tips, and there's a picture of me posing with Pokemon. If you click on that picture, it takes you to the tips page, where you can either do an anonymous tip, or you can leave your name in a message. Alright? Fair enough? So, in fact, Mort, the regular troll, did a $2 troll tip, and asked me about... Well, I recognize Bible Black. I don't recognize the other thing he said here. <laughs> at all. <laughs> um. But yeah, thanks for the troll tip, Mort. Ripley Atomic, just subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Ripley Atomic, for subscribing. Appreciate that. 
He's, it says he's a first-time subscriber at Tier 1. Thank you. And the Wanderer 1800. The attendant cheer and says, I can help you build a powerful PC. There are forums and guides. My PC is good and cost me only $1,100. Well, congratulations, Wanderer. I hope that you, ha you like your PC. However, I have no money. I have $0 to spend on a PC. Especially with all the new releases and everything coming out in the next few months, I'm going to be completely strapped for cash. So, that's why I'm trying to appeal to people to pledge to Patreon and tip me. Because I'm not kidding. I actually need the support. I'm not exaggerating. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yes, I've, I've just been saying I have no money. And someone actually just cheered and said they, that they'll build me a, a PC for $1,000. <laughs> I know. Ironic, isn't it? Okay. Rusty Forever said something incredibly stupid in stream chat. He says, Phil has no money, but he pays for mobile games. No, I don't. They're free to play, dude. Mobile games are free to play, but if you want to actually advance and win, then you have to pay. But I'm a free player, dude. I have no money to put into these games. None. Shout out to Anonymous. I got an Anonymous $5 tip. Thank you, Anonymous, for the tip. I appreciate that. Shout out to Kekin, who just tipped me $5. He says, I never had a problem with World War II Call of Duty games. It was weird to me when the games got away from it. In any case, here's hoping this is a return to form. I agree. I'm very much hoping this is a return to form. Shout out to Kovaris, who did a 20-bit cheer and says, do you, do you ever bump? What the fuck? <laughs> what is it? What does this even mean? Oh, my God. Do you ever bump Playboy Carty? When heading out to do errands. I don't know what you're talking about, alright? You're out of your mind. What is going on? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what's happening anymore. We're off the rails. We've lost control. Alright? Off the rails. Lost control. Don't know what's going on. I'm losing my mind. Okay. Okay. Oh. Derek says he's asking me if you listen to music. Why didn't he fucking say that? <laughs> Kovaris, please master the English language. Because I had no idea what you're talking about. No idea. None. <laughs> and the Wanderer did another 10-bit cheer and asked a generic question about if I'm playing games, which I already said I'm not going to answer, so enough of that. Okay. I think it is time. It is time to try the beta. One final thing. Um, I really hope that the videos that I make of this beta don't immediately get flagged for demonetization on YouTube. And the reason I say that is because it was a few months ago. Um, the YouTubers who primarily cover first-person shooters and a lot of YouTubers actually only call, call cover Call of Duty. I know that sounds crazy because you would think, how the hell do you just call cover Call of Duty and still make a living? I know. But apparently there are still a few YouTubers, so this is all they do, okay? Um, apparently they were trying to cover this game months ago. You know, like, do oh, here's the trailer, and here's our analyzation of the trailer, and let's talk about the game and stuff like that. <laughs> apparently, all of their videos got demonetized. Some of which to the point where they were like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to YouTube anymore because if the new game comes out and I can't monetize any videos of it, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. So... Here's hoping that they don't all get demonetized immediately. <laughs> I hope not. <clears throat> I guess we'll see what happens. Um, if they do, it may dramatically change the amount of coverage that I give Call of Duty World War II. Now, I already pre-ordered the game because the game looks good, but huh, that would really suck. I guess we'll find out. I guess what I could do is just name them something else. Call of Duty's Old Schools. I'll do, I'll do like I did. You know what I'll do? I'll do like I did with frickin' uh, L.A. Noir, Dicks with Guns, so I'll call something else. What, could you, what should I call it? Do Your Duties, Do Your Duties, uh... <laughs> I said to think of something, something good to call it, you know? Something stupid. And everyone who watches my stuff will know what it is. The happening. 
There you go. Because that's all it is. The stupid, the stupid algorithm that YouTube's running. It's searching for your, your the name of your, your uh, video, the tags of your video, the description of your video, your thumbnail. Like, that's the stuff it's, it's looking at. If I name it something different, it probably won't be able to find it. <laughs> all right. Anyway, here we go. Let's check it out. Let's see what this is all about. All right, fair enough. All right, thanks, everybody. Let's do this. Let's do this.